morning, Alive family. It is so exciting to be with you today. I hope you are ready to learn about our next piece of the armor. So before we start, as always, we start our day in worship. So I want you to stand up, reach really high, and let's get ready to praise God. <laughs> so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm, then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Hey everyone, I'm back talking about the armor of God. So, so far as you guys can see, I've got my armor on, I've got my belts of truth. I've got my breastplate of righteousness. I've got my feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. I've got the shield of faith. And I got the crown of it all. My Santa hat. Oh, sorry guys, this is the wrong one. I need, this isn't gonna protect my head. I need the helmet of salvation. This will protect my head 
in battle, just like it would protect a Roman soldier's head. So just like you're doing sports or anything, you know protecting your head is so important. Because if you get hit in the head, you can have serious, serious injuries. And that's not something you want to be worried about when you're playing like something like baseball or uh, football or anything else. The same is true with the Roman soldier. They didn't want to be worried about when they were in battle about something happening to their head, whether it be getting hit by um, something part of the terrain or with an arrow or just getting hit in their head. So we have the helmet of salvation to protect their heads. Well, God gives us the spiritual helmet of salvation because the enemy attacks us in our minds. What I mean by that is the thoughts he wants to put in us, the fearful thoughts or the, um, the evil thoughts that he wants to put, us, uh, put in our minds is how he likes to attack us. It's not the only way, but it's a serious way that uh, he wants to take us down. He wants us to doubt our faith. And so we want to have the helmet of salvation to remember that Jesus saved us from our sins, that we are right with him, and God loves us. And so today we're going to talk about how we can put on our helmet of salvation. From the esteemed book of Acts, chapter 16, verse 6 through 40. Paul and Silas were missionaries. They traveled from place to place telling people about Jesus. These people had never heard about him before. They were so happy to be saved from their sins. One fateful night, Paul had a vision of a man from the region of Macedonia. The man begged Paul to come to Macedonia and help them. Paul and Silas left right away. When they got to the city of Philippi, they went to pray beside the river that was outside the city. They talked to the women who gathered there. A businesswoman named Lydia listened to Paul and Silas tell about Jesus, and her heart was opened. She and the other ladies from her household accepted Jesus and were saved. Later inside that same city, Paul and Silas were followed and harassed by a young girl who was filled with an evil spirit. She shouted over and over that they were servants of the Most High God and telling people how to be saved. Paul commanded the evil spirit to leave her, and it did immediately. But this made some people in the city unhappy. Paul and Silas were beaten, then thrown in jail, even though they had done nothing wrong. Instead of whining and feeling sorry for themselves, they sang praises to God. The prisoners around them were listening and heard the truth about Jesus. Suddenly the entire prison began to shake. The prison doors flew open and the chains fell off of them. The guard was terrified all the prisoners had escaped, but Paul reassured him that they were still there. He fell trembling at Paul and Silas's feet and begged to hear how to be saved about Jesus. Paul and Silas told the guard's family about Jesus and all of them were saved. They were all filled with joy. The next day, the officials in town sent orders for Paul and Silas to be released from jail. They met with new Christians in Lydia's house, then continued their journey in Macedonia. But the new Christians in Philippi told others how to be saved by Jesus, and the church grew bigger and bigger. God used Paul and Silas to bring salvation to so many people that had never heard about Jesus before. So their one act of obedience brought salvation to one and another and another until it became more and more. Have you ever done a domino run before? Let's try it. That one little domino. Here, I'm going to help it. <laughs> Yay! So think about what happens if you take out one domino. It stops the whole run and it keeps it from hitting all the others, right? So that could be like our thoughts. If you ever let your thoughts kind of get run away with you, like it starts out as something little and it gets bigger and bigger. Let me give you an example. So say you're hanging out with your friend and all of a sudden she says, I've got to go and she runs off. So right then you've got a choice. You can be like, okay, that was weird. Or 
sometimes our thoughts get carried away with us and we start thinking, hmm, I wonder if she's mad at me. Oh, maybe she doesn't like me at all anymore. Oh my goodness. What if none of my friends like me anymore? Or what if I never ever have any friends again ever? That's kind of an extreme example, but you get the idea, right? That one little thought led to another and to another. When really your friend just remembered that she didn't do her chores at home and she ran off and it had nothing to do with you to begin with. So that's how the enemy lies to your brain. He puts doubts in there, sometimes about yourself or about others. And he just is going to try to make you miserable by letting those thoughts grow and just distract you from the truth. So there's a great verse in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. It says, we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. So here's the thing. It's your mind. The things that go on in your mind are your choice. One of those doubts comes in, you have a choice. You get to decide if you're going to keep thinking about it or if you want to stop. Because the helmet of salvation wants to protect you from the enemy, but God doesn't control your mind like a robot. He is going to help you, but you have to make that choice. Okay, so let's think about how this actually works. Because sometimes you think what comes into your mind just happens to you. But let's, let, I'm gonna show you how it actually is a choice. So I've got some thoughts that you might have, or maybe yours is something different, but think about a doubt or a lie the enemy has told you. So Pastor Sonia says, maybe having faith in God is too hard. Isaiah says, maybe no one likes me. And Ryan says, maybe I'll never be good at anything. So those are lies and doubts that the devil might put in your mind. So I am going to take this thought captive and I am going to say, no, I don't believe that that is true. And I am going to believe the word of God. And I'm going to pray as a, I'm going to ask God to help me to believe what's true. And I'm going to choose to stop thinking that thought or that thought or that thought too. You know, as Miss Amy talked about, we are supposed to take every thought captive. All those thoughts of anger, worry, doubt, frustration that snowball, like she talked about, into something that it shouldn't be. That's not how God wants us to think. He wants us to think on his, his word, on his truths. When we ask Jesus into our heart, we are, are what we call being saved. Salvation is so important. When we put on the helmet of salvation, we become God's child. We become part of his family. So why does it say in Ephesians 6, 17 that we are to put on the helmet of salvation? Isn't it already, does it fall off? Does it get knocked off? Does, how does the helmet come off that we have to put it on every day? Well, do you see this whiteboard? This whiteboard is filled with words and thoughts and things that the enemy throws at us every day. It may be your brother's annoying today and that snowballs into I don't like him and all these other things that um, distract us from it, our relationship from God or become can ultimately become sin in our lives. And our mind fills with all these things. And that's not what God wants us to think of. Maybe we're on our video games too much or maybe we are, um, I don't know, we're watching too many movies or we're spending all of our time on sports and and not spending any time in God's word or with the things of God. And that becomes so confusing in our minds. And God says, but wait, 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 where am I in this picture? I don't even know if we can find the word Bible in this picture or the word praying in this picture. But we do see where Satan has tried to tell us, am I really saved? Well, that's because we filled our minds with all these other things that we haven't taken time for God and the things of God and spent time in prayer and spend time in his words. You know, I don't even think I see the word Bible up there. I don't even know that I see the word church up there. All we're doing is filling with all these other things. And God says, no, put on my salvation, put on the helmet of salvation, and I will take away all that. And every morning as you do that, 
We start our minds new and fresh in Him. And we need to have a fresh um, presence of God every day in our life. Start your day in the Word. Start your day in prayer so that you can have that full foundation of faith as you go about your day and the enemy starts throwing things at you. So we're gonna pray right now and I want you to make sure if you've never taken the opportunity to pray the pr prayer of salvation, find a mom or dad right now or a brother or even a sister and say, hey, will you pray with me? It's as simple as that. We have on the website a sheet that will walk you through, walk your parents through how to pray with you about that. But you know what? You can even pray that yourself. And God says that he is there with you. So let me pray with you right now, okay? Bow your heads, close your eyes. Father, we just thank you for your full armor that you've given us that we can put on every day to know that you are with us in the battle, that you are protecting us, that you are protecting our minds, that we do not have to hold on to those thoughts that the enemy throws at us, that we can take those captives and we can throw those away, God, and know that we can be firm in our foundation of your truth that says we are your children, we are called by you, we are loved by you, you have given us a purpose and you have a plan for our lives. Father God, we just praise you and we thank you and we give you all glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. So, one thing that always helps me remember to remember all of this stuff is looking at Bible verses. So, to help us get really good at looking at these Bible verses, we're going to have a contest, okay? This is a Bible sword lookup. you got to be really quick, okay, to find it first. Are you ready? All right, you're going to be looking up. First Thessalonians, no, don't go yet. Okay. First Thessalonians 5, 8 through 9, go. Got it, got, got it. it. Oh, Miss Amy stood up. <laughs> it's okay, we're gonna read it all together, okay? Ready, one, two, Three. But, but since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and a hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. So hopefully, knowing where that verse is, that'll help you guys remember what to look for and how to help clear your mind with all of this stuff. Well, we're going to we're going to go back to what it said when we were teaching, renewing your mind, renewing your head, making yourself clear-headed and not listening to anything that the devil is saying, but your any lies that he says, none of it. You're not going to listen to any of it. You're only going to listen to what God says and what he's written in the Bible for you to know. Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining us today and for watching our video. Hope you all enjoyed that lesson on putting on the armor of God and the helmet of salvation. Um, putting on the helmet of salvation protects us against the enemy, and that's something we want to make sure we're doing every day throughout the week. Hope you all will stay connected with us, and uh, have a blessed week.